Right, we are back. So we're jumping from the polyurethane putty that I created to epoxy putty. Now this is much more like a putty and this is a trial run I did. You can see some kind of marks where I've pushed it to see if it cured and it is just as hard and solid but you get a much longer work time than the polyurethane version. So for this I'm using just some fast cure resin to do this and I've equal I've equaled out <laughs> measured out five mil of each part into my mixing cup same as the polyurethane video I'm just going to add cornstarch until the mixture is thick enough and workable as a putty and excuse my mold you can see I have been experimenting and this is just my experimental mold and silicon mat don't judge me, it is an absolute mess, I know. <laughs> so, I've got my cornstarch ready, and as one viewer mentioned, I called this a tablespoon, it's a quarter of a teaspoon, but this is going to vary depending on the epoxy that you are using. But I'm just going to be flattening out each spoon and counting, and we want equal amounts in both parts. Now, this does take more cornstarch, than the polyurethane version even though the resin is thicker so just bear that in mind so that is 10 in there 10 scoops in there at the moment and i'm just going to mix that up and you'll see that it will still need more now you could do it oh well careful <laughs> you could color each part as many of you have suggested in the comments on the polyurethane version but I'm not going to because I want to color mine black and you'll see why shortly but you can see just how thick that is getting but it's not going to be thick enough for what I want it's just going to be too sticky too messy and just not workable now another thing to bear in mind with this is when you work it into a putty form the heat from your hands is going to lower the viscosity of the putty also so just bear in mind that it is going to get a little bit messy shortly so that is 10 I already know for this measurement that I need another three scoops to get it to where I want it but again depending on the epoxy that you're using you may need more I can't see you needing less because this is a really high viscosity resin but you could need more or less and same as mixing resin, make sure that you're scraping the edges of the cup. Although we've only got the one part in there, you do want to make sure that corn flour is mixed in thoroughly. As always, massive shout out to my channel members, anyone who's bought me a coffee or a super thanks, and to any new subs. You can see just after those additional three scoops that it's, it's really becoming more like a thick putty. I think I might go in with one more, which is one more than what I did in my trial run. And look, there's a lump of something in my cornstarch as well, so just be careful. I don't want that in there. Just thoroughly, thoroughly mix that in. And there it is much better consistency than the polyurethane version so we just now repeat we use exactly the same amount of scoops that we've used in one part into the other part so this is both of them thoroughly mixed up now you can do the same thing as we did with the polyurethane resin have two parts labeled up so you can just pop these into those parts and just use them as and when you need them or you could do, as I said, mix a, say a red and a blue. So when you know they're mixed together, it turns a purple. But I want to color mine black. And I'm going to do that now, just for the purpose of what I'm going to show you in this video. So I'm just going to use a black mica powder. Now, because we've put so much cornstarch, and I'm going to use quite a lot of mica powder, it is going to affect the, the cure time of the resin, so just bear that in mind. It's a four hour fast cure resin, but 
it does take a little bit longer, I must admit. And you're probably wondering why don't you just add black to one of them? Because I want to know the strength of my black mica before I put the two parts together and end up with a grey. So I'm just ensuring that I'm going to get a 100% happy result. And just mix those in again. Also, really thick. Right, I'm going to continue. And there you can see it. Another really important thing, make sure you've got separate sticks for separate for both pots. You don't want to then go putting this one in that one because that's going to start activating that part of the resin and you don't want that. There you go. So there we have a really nice black putty. You can see where this one's been sitting here for a while. It's come really, really shiny. Now when you mix them together, it can be used in molds can be used in free form again so many applications so many uses for this it's incredible so this is where things start to get a little bit messy so I'm going to take an equal part of one just try and roll that into a ball again the heat from your hands is going to affect it. I think maybe I needed a little bit more cornstarch in mine. <laughs> so I added <laughs> another two scoops of cornstarch. Should be a lot better to... there we go. We've got a putty again. I don't know why I must have got my measurements wrong. You don't want it sticking to your gloves like it did when I just did it. That's what we want. Really workable, not as messy as, <laughs> as the one that I just tried. So I'm just eyeballing it. I'm going to get two round balls. Sorry, my hands are not in shot properly. Two round balls, same size. And then just bond them together. And just what I do is I roll it into a ball, squash it, fold it, a bit like kneading. And just keep squashing it and folding it with the palm of my hands just for a couple of minutes really I know it's difficult to tell because there's not those two colors to know when it's blended and there we go it's much more putty like <clears throat> and that, excuse me I think we've probably got a 40 minute to one hour work time with this which is a lot better than the polyurethane version and this is what I mean about the viscosity lowering and why it can be a little bit messy. So with the, the heat from your hands is gonna it's gonna create this. So now that is mixed, I'm just gonna break off a small amount. I'm just gonna pop that in the top part of my mold and just push that and work that into a design. Just on the top half. Really easy to work with. And then the same with the bottom. I'll go with a smaller ball this time. going to be like a split design again just work that in now what I did was waited for mine to cure and then I finished it off with UV resin which works really well but I don't see why you can't just mix up a two-part epoxy color it and pour it in now I don't think it's going to have any kind of adverse effects on the putty. I think they're just going to cure at the same time. Again, a tiny amount at the bottom there, but I don't want to don't want to mix up any more. I'm just going to work that into the mold the best I can. And just make sure the putty is all the way to the top of your mold cavity. Like so. 
So I'm just mixing up some more resin. I'm going to try and do it and see if I can get it all in one go. I'm just using some of the liquid dye from Let's Resin. Two drops I think will do to begin with. I don't want it too blue. I'm just going to mix that up and then pour in. Hopefully it will work. I got lots of bubbles but I don't care. <laughs> So I'm just going to top this one up with the blue and then I'm going to drop some purplish red into my blue. Hopefully it won't go yucky and muddy. Hopefully I'll get a nice purplish colour. And then top that one up and we'll be back for the demold. Right, we're all cured. So did they cure together or is the putty still tacky? we're gonna find out now this one I can already see it's very very dark the color kind of went a bit too intense with it so I have got my torch ready <laughs> just to show you up against light but the color was just a bit too intense so what I did with the UV version I'll show you before we demold this one is I just waited for the putty to cure and then I topped up with the colored UV resin. And then I, because my mold is very dull, I just gave it a glaze coat. And they turn out absolutely stunning. Needs a little scuba diver in there. So this would work. I've lost my words. You could mix your two parts of epoxy up, add your cornstarch and then kind of go with the flow and use it there and then or you could do what I suggested and store it as always give the video a thumbs up drop me a comment if you haven't subbed it is free hit that button for me we've got some texture in the bottom of this one looks a little bit like rocks underwater you can see that mark on my mold my mold was actually a bad mold when it arrived which is why I'm using it for experiments there's one there and one there but these dimples will go with a top coat, so don't worry about that. But there you go, you can do it in one pour. I do prefer, definitely when you've done like a glaze coat, really does shine up. Now you can also experiment with using nail powders on the back, just have a little play around with it. But this putty is absolutely solid absolutely solid hope you enjoyed the video i will see you for the next one bye for now